Hey guys, welcome to my studio. Wow, I just finished watching the teaser number two released by Nikon for Z9 camera and boy, what a great result, what a great opportunities. And let me share with you some of my findings and my thoughts, what I think is actually coming and when, right after this. So guys, let's take a quick look at the video all together and I'm gonna break it down to you what I think it's coming with this camera and my thoughts about the camera. So after looking at the camera, so some of my thoughts about this is what I'm finding is as we're looking in the front of the camera, Nikon is trying to show us that we clearly see that there are three function buttons uh, shown in the front of the camera that's going to be accessible kind of with, um, the, with your fingers. But there's also this third function button and I think this is going to be very helpful when you have your camera in the portrait mode. Um, if you look in the example of this camera, let's say if there was a, with a grip, I would be able to access this one with my, um, probably with my index finger. So as far as the back camera, we what we've seen already from the previous uh, teaser one, um, nothing has changed so far. Another exciting thing about what we can tell, and this is where Nikon, I think, is teasing us, is there are some shots that appears to be they're showcasing a 70 to 200 f 2.8, but yet you can clearly tell that it is not a 70 to 200. What I'm thinking, it's probably one of the two, and I'm kind of leaning towards the first one. I think looking at the roadmap that the Nikon has released for Z mount lenses, the next one up in, uh, up in the line is 100 to 400. And I think this is what they're showcasing. And also I'm thinking from the logistical standpoint, when you're going on Safari, you're probably not bringing 70 to 200. You may be if you have a teleconverter, but I think you're gonna bring something like 100 to 400 with you. So I think this is what they're trying to showcase. My second thought, maybe it could be 400 f 2.8, but it's kind of unlikely because that lens would typically would be much larger than what we see in the video. Now, let's talk about video features. And this is where Nikon is really getting into a different arena when it comes to video. Now, based on the video, we can tell that the camera is recording in 8K because of what we see, the resolution is set to 4320 at 30 frames per second. Now, probably one of the most exciting things that it's gonna be obvious as soon as it's released is that Nikon is teasing us with this uh, time recording limit. Uh, they're showing at 29 minutes and 59 seconds. And the next clip, it's showing that the time keeps going. So that tells me that 30 minute record limit has been finally removed, which is exciting. And I'm wondering if Nikon would consider trickling down with a software update to Z62 and Z72 also remove the time limit although I'm very doubtful about that one. Now, so we can see the camera, it goes to 37 minutes, to one hour, to even one hour and 20 minutes. And it's showing it's recording in 8K. Now, we don't see an external recorder attached on the video. So that tells me that it should be able to record 8K internally. But the question is, it's, is it recording at 8-bit or 10-bit? We still don't know. But regardless, we have an 8K. And the reason I think Nikon is heavily getting into video 
because just recently another company by name Suray, if I'm pronouncing correctly, just released a 50 millimeter 2.9T uh, anamorphic lens and they release specifically in a Z mount right so that new lens is coming out in four different mounts it's RF for Canon, Z mount for Nikon, E mount for Sony and L mount so I'm thinking these companies they really talk they know what's going on they communicate ahead of time because they won't be putting a lot of resources so a lot of these messages are really indicating that Nikon is going to be heavily pushing down in the video department which I think is exciting for many of those like myself who are Nikon users so so far we have seen only two videos right the first one that was released last week kind of showcasing fashion photography more in studio kind of work today we saw another another video that showcasing a wildlife now we know that um, usually these kind of cameras flagship cameras uh, like d5 d6 they are particularly targeting sports and wildlife shooters so I'm starting to wonder what's going to be in the next two videos I anticipate one of the videos is going to show us probably some footage with Nikon Z9 photographing some sort of a sports activity whether it's going to be a soccer a football tennis some sort of um, sports activity to really showcase uh, the frame rate and the uh, no blackout now another video that I think the fourth one that will be and I'm feeling pretty good about the third video um, or at least one of the two videos that will be a sports video I think the fourth one is going to be possibly showcasing something for weddings now this is again my guess I don't think this is what Nikon is necessarily targeting can you shoot a wedding with a Z9 absolutely would you get a gorgeous images absolutely but I don't think this is going to be their target market this is just my anticipation but I also think what may be shown in the fourth video is that how Nikon heavily pushing down video work so they may kind of show clip uh, possibly something uh, with the filmmakers in mind shooting either commercial or a short documentary so I think this is a direction that Nikon is heading with with Nikon Z9 primarily targeting portraits sports and wildlife and I think they're trying to communicate to us that they're really looking to get in into the uh, filmmakers filmmaking market with these videos now what's clear to us from all these videos that this is going to be a flagship Nikon's flagship camera and the way you can tell this by looking at some of the elements that Nikon is introducing with the Z9 and one of them is being circular a viewfinder like on this one D500 that Nikon called the flagship camera as well as this sort of a circular design uh, quick access to your wide balance quality metering mode so um, it is an 8k flagship camera that is absolutely exciting to so many of us now I think the camera is gonna have a pretty hefty price I think the camera is gonna come out with introductory price my guess at $69.99 or $74.99 based on the videos that have been released so far one last week one this week I think we're gonna see two more videos by the end of October and I anticipate if this is the way the Nikon is heading that they may start pre-ordering cameras by the time holidays come around now the camera might be priced a little bit higher than um, a1 Sony but I think with the holiday season people may feel like okay it's worth it 
its holidays, has ton of features that's probably worth to a lot of professional photographers and they may pull the trigger to order the camera. So these are some of my thoughts on the camera. Please consider subscribing if this is something that you're into. Tap that notification bell when a new video comes out and hit the like button if you like the video or was entertaining to you so that I can bring more videos like this to viewers like you. Thank you.